guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Grace of Goodness Gracious, and this week I am building a collapsible wine table. After looking up many YouTube videos on how to build this and different renditions of it, I think I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do. Before we jump into it, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. Okay, where do I even start? The beginning of this project was utter chaos. I knew that I wanted the top of the wine table to be a 12 inch diameter. So I started off by drawing out a 12 inch by 12 inch square. So hot outside, so hot inside, everything is just hot and sweaty and gross. I then went back and traced another square one inch in from the original square so that I could know to put all the fixtures of the table one inch in from the edge. Don't do that! <laughs> I used my own hand as a guide uh, to know how big to cut the handle of the table. I'm using an inch and a half hole saw to cut the holes for the wine glasses to sit in. And I'm a very visual person so I traced them right out so that I could actually see what the table would look like in pencil before I actually cut anything. And then I did the same thing for where the wine bottle would go. I just traced out whereabouts it would be so I could see it in pencil first. And then I started the long, arduous journey of trying to measure out how to draw an octagon. Math is hard. Put the pencil in the compass in order for it to work. I found the best thing to do at this point was to draw a circle so that I can then better measure out an octagon. There were so many shapes on this piece of wood at this point, it was so confusing. If you want to do this, just Google a picture of an octagon, print it out and trace it because this journey was ridiculous. This is like an entire night I spent just calculating and measuring and just doing all kinds of math. I made a circle so that I could find every two inch cut to make a whatever this ends up being, a 14 agon. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 agon. To cut out the handle, I'm using a one inch hole saw and cutting holes on either end of the handle. And then I'm gonna go in with a jigsaw later on and connect them to make the handle. You'll see, I'll show you. Now when I'm using the hole saw, I will drill halfway through the wood and then flip it over and finish the cut starting from the other side and that keeps the wood from ripping on either side. <laughs> My wood was just a little too long to fit in the drill press so I had to trim the end off. But that's okay because I needed to cut it anyways so may as well start now. Daisy handle. Ooh. I'm so, so very hot, and I don't want to keep complaining about it. I just want you to know I'm sweating. For the spot where the wine glasses rest, I'm using a one and a half inch hole saw to cut the holes and then I'll go back with the jigsaw and cut notches out for the stem to fit through.
I'm using the radial arm saw to cut the notches out to make an octagon. It was a little tricky because there's no flat edge to put against the fence, so I was just kind of eyeballing where to put it and then holding on to it for dear life and hoping for the best. I'm sweating. It is so hot. It's so hot right now. Moving on to the base of this table. I wanted it to sit at about 30 inches, so I grabbed a scrap piece of plywood and I first cut it at 30 inches. And then I ripped it down to about 4 inches. I wasn't trying to be exact because there was going to be a lot more cuts to come. This was just kind of the base that I was working with. I started off by figuring out how far down I wanted the wine bottle to sit. And then looking at a picture on my phone, I was able to just sort of trace out what I wanted it to look like. You know, wavy and organic lines and a little bit of a tapered leg, but nothing too specific. You can really, you can get creative at this point. I used my jigsaw to cut out the top half of the base. Uh, the bottom of the base was a whole nother story, but we'll get to that in a bit. I'm calling it a night, I'm going for a swim. Don't judge me. To cut the hole for the wine bottle to fit in, I decided that a 4 inch hole saw was probably my best bet. That way it could fit a regular size wine bottle and maybe even a magnum. The bottle doesn't have to fit snugly, but it definitely has to be able to go through the hole. My biggest fear in here is that someday I'm gonna put my headphones on and there's gonna be a spider in it and it's gonna crawl into my brain and lay eggs and I'll become a spider woman but not like the cool kind, you know? So as I said, I'm just using the jigsaw to cut notches wide enough for the stem of a wine glass to fit through. <laughs> it looks like an alien! And then heading over to the router table, I'm just routering all the edges to round them over and just make them look a little bit more professional. I have a tendency to burn the edges when I'm routering things, and Kevin tells me it's because I'm actually moving too slowly. So, tip of the day, when you're using a router, move quickly. cut this in half really quick. Okay, I know I said that trying to draw an octagon was hard, but this by far was the hardest part of the whole thing. Trying to figure out where the hole should go so that I can put the leg up and down without interference was so hard. I couldn't figure it out. What I ended up doing 
was cutting a template out of cardboard and just poking a whole bunch of holes in it until I found the one that worked and then traced that hole onto a piece of wood and that's what worked for me. <laughs> Way down there, eh? Hi. I'm gonna start by drilling uh, a very small hole just to make sure that's gonna work. And if it does, then I'll drill a bigger hole. And if it doesn't, we just won't talk about that. So I drilled a hole through the base and then I clamped the two side pieces together and used the drill press to ensure that they were perfectly lined up. When that was done, I actually just used a small drill bit to put through the hole to make sure it was going to work. You guys! Once I knew that it was going to work, I clamped all the pieces together in the closed position and marked where the hole should go to keep it shut. And then I did the same thing with an open position clamped it together and dotted where the hole should be to keep it open. And then since the side pieces were just off cuts, I marked where I could cut them off in the back so that they were even. And then I brought everything over to the drill press so that I could re-drill everything with a quarter inch drill bit, widen the holes so that they would actually fit the quarter inch bolts that I bought to keep everything together. And then I took those side pieces over to the radial arm saw so that I could cut them up and sand them down and just give them a nicer shape. Now to attach the side pieces to the top of the table, I used wood glue and I spaced them out exactly where they needed to be. And then I actually used drill bits to line up the holes to make sure that they were perfectly aligned. And then I tried to clamp it all together, but I could not figure it out. So I ended up just piling a bunch of heavy stuff on top of it and calling it a day. It was quite the debacle, but in the end, I got a tapered leg. One of the last things I had to do was drill a hole in the bottom of the leg to screw in a 12 inch screw so that you can stick it into the ground, thus making it a table. I'm so scared. And yes, this part was very scary because drilling six inches completely straight is very hard for me personally.
I gave the leg a little final sanding and then took it over to the router table to route all the edges and make it all fancy looking. And then moving on to the outside world, I decided to stain this in dark walnut because I love dark walnut and I don't get enough chances to use it. When that was all dry, I did a spray polyurethane and then put it all together with quarter inch bolts. And then I flipped it over and screwed in the 12 inch threaded rod that you put in the ground so that it stands up straight. Thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting my tiny little channel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. I put out videos almost every Thursday. Probably not next Thursday because uh, I've got a big project on the go and a bit of vacation booked. So I'll be back in about two weeks or whenever this project is done. Make sure you stick around because it's going to be a good one. We're getting back into the garage. I'm super excited. Anywho, I hope you guys have a great week or a great month or however long it is until I'm back. And I will see you then. Bye-bye.